Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Bainbridge Island Senior Center Something to Talk About series. Today we have, excuse me, Becky Johnson from Bainbridge Island Museum of Arts Creative Aging Program with us to do a little presentation. So welcome, Miss Becky. Um, before we get started, we'd like to do a couple of acknowledgements. Uh, the first one's for the Fieldstone Communities of Bainbridge Island as we are sponsored by Fieldstone Communities of Bainbridge Island and they offer memory care and independent living and will be opening assisted living units in August. So that's starting tomorrow. And they're now accepting residents. They also offer day stay and respite programs. If you're interested for more information, please call 360-594-1010 to schedule a tour of Fieldstone's apartments on Rolling Bay today. We would also like to acknowledge that we are gathering on the ancestral homeland of the Suquamish people, the people of the clear salt water who have lived on the water of the Salish Sea since time immemorial. We honor them and are grateful for their hospitality. So now I would like to hand it over to Ms. Becky and you can take it away with your presentation. Thank you, Lena. Um, I'm going to share screen. It's been a while since I've done a Zoom that requires a share screen, so I'll just uh, get that set up if you'll be patient with me for just one moment. Everybody can see? Thumbs up? Yeah? Okay. Well, um, thank you everybody for coming to this presentation today, and I think I know most people here, but um, by way of introduction, I am Becky Johnston, and I am the Manager of Education and Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, Advancement Programs at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art. And Reed asked me here today to talk specifically about creative aging programs, both in museum world in general and at BEMA specifically. So today, the agenda is, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why do we even have creative aging programs in museums and what the heck are they? Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our current offerings in terms of creative aging programming at BEMA and through BEMA. And then I'm gonna give an overview of kind of what the big picture issues are in terms of creative aging discussions nationally, and hopefully get some feedback from you about how we might incorporate these um, action items for creating healthy communities here on Bainbridge. So, some statistics um, which lead into the why creative aging. Um, by 2030, one in five Americans will be over the age of 65. And by 2034, older adults will outnumber kids in the United States. Now, over the past 70 years, um, much of our focus as a society and in terms of policymakers has been on providing supports for families with kids, um, whether that be how zoning looks, how employment decisions are made, what transportation infrastructure we have in our neighborhoods, and what building and neighborhood design looks like. And kind of the culmination of the 70 years worth of policymaking has been a system that tends to isolate people as they age. Now, social isolation is not good for anybody across the board. Um, you can broadly define social isolation as a lack of meaningful contact with others, and that can be in-person contacts or virtual contacts, um, as we've learned over the last several years. Um, now, this lack of meaningful contact with other people creates a significant risk factor for poor health status and increased mortality among older folks. And when we're looking at younger populations, what we see is they miss really meaningful opportunities to be guided by and learn from community elders. And what museums have seen is that museums of all kind, not just art museums, um, is that we can play an important role in co-creating age-friendly communities that support social interaction, help to combat social isolation, and serve as a vehicle for intellectual stimulation. 
And what that does, um, most importantly, is it gives a chance for elders to interact with each other and also across generations. Now, for the last 10 years, BIMA has um, tried to, and I think mostly succeeded, in serving as a learning hub for all ages and stages of life. And that role is constantly evolving to meet community needs, not just inside of our building, um, but kind of as a museum without walls um, and in the community. Um, we've been making it a priority to serve our community at all ages and stages of life. And our creative aging specific programming is really a cornerstone of this effort. Right now, we're currently offering free and low cost programs for people who want to make art, foster connections and communities, and support their minds and their bodies, no matter what age or stage of life they're at. So first of all, what is creative aging in terms of how I'm talking about it? Um, so researchers have discovered that the aging brain, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, is far more plastic than they used to think. Um, and structured learning in particular, especially through the arts, can improve cognitive function and enhance the quality of life. There's a landmark study back in 2006 by Dr. Jean Cohen called the Creativity and Aging Study, and it showed that professional we conducted arts-based learning programs promotes better health and disease prevention among older adults who actively engaged in them. And those um, arts programming were generally taught by professional teaching artists, and they kind of had three specific components. They had components of sequential learning, skill building exercises, and had a social connection component to them. And when, when those three things intersected, you had a quality creative aging outcome. Now, based on Dr. Cohen's work, many museums and arts organizations throughout the world, including BIMA, started to offer creative aging specific programming. Um, what I wanted to do today was take a little bit of time to talk about what we are currently offering when it comes to creative aging um, programs like through the museum and also some of the partnerships we've developed in the community. But most importantly, I want to have a conversation about if you've participated in the programs, what has worked for you, what's been a challenge for you, and how we can move forward um, in partnership to develop kind of enhanced creative aging offerings over the next 10 years. So first up, um, our Art in Action program at the Bainbridge Island Senior Community Center. Um, BIMA hosts a series of monthly art making activities in partnership with the Senior Community Center. And every month, so these have been going on for almost a year um, on a monthly basis. We started up last October, so a little under a year. Um, every month we have drawn a capacity and sometimes an overflow. Last month we had a couple of extra people show up, but everybody was willing to share supplies. So we sometimes get an overflow crowd. And it's lifelong learners um, who meet to co-learn and have conversation. It's a very casual, low-key way to engage in art making. Now, the program is conducted at the Senior Center, but we generally tie in our activities to BEMA exhibitions and collections. Many of the attendees at this program either visit BEMA regularly or even serve as volunteers um, as docents. Um, and I find that people are finding new relevance and new connections by engaging their hands in a way to what they're experiencing more with their heads at BIMA um, when they come to visit the museum. So it's just, a, it's, it's almost like a, a two site creative aging program where people are combining their heads and their hearts um, with their brains. Um, generally speaking, Art in Action takes place from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock um, on every second Tuesday of the month. Recent activities have included bookmaking, wax resist painting, and then a community art project that is called You Are So Very Beautiful. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that project because there's an intergenerational component to that too. And there's um, on the slide, you'll see some of the affirmations that people created. So 
an artist named Betsy Greer, who wrote a book called Craftivism, um, initiated this project in 2016. And in this stitchery project, people are invited to create positive affirmations that begin with, you are so very, as the prompt. And the thought is you stitch or write a positive message that you can then pay forward by hiding it or leaving it in plain sight in the community for someone else to find. So in May, um, we came together at the Senior Center and I brought just random embroidery floss and pieces of cut up felt and we all just um, sat around and stitched messages um, and shared them with each other. Um, I know some people left them like throughout their building or had specific people in mind. For me, it, um, later that week, I was judging the arts fair, the spring arts fair at the high school. So I took a few and hid them in the stacks at the high school library for people to find, um, which is I hope they get found. And I just I thought that was really fun. And like they were just sort of in plain sight, but definitely like someone would need to be like walking through the stacks to find them. Um, I think a couple of people were planning on um, leaving them at the TNC in the grocery aisles. So that was a really cool project. And it was a lot of fun to work on. Um, now, this month, or starting tomorrow, um, we've been working with the Senior Center and Bainbridge Arts and Crafts and a couple of volunteer curators um, on a pop-up exhibit of participant art that's going to be at the Bainbridge Island Library for the next month. So I encourage you between August 1st and I think um, the end of August is when it will close to go and visit some of the work that's been created. Um, I'm especially excited about a pop-up flag book that was made by Jan Haven at a workshop a few months ago. Um, there is an example of the, that session in the slides. Um, she started the project at the Art in Action and then took it home to finish it and brought it back the next month. And while she was there, um, Catherine Exton, who is one of the curators, was like, oh, can I use that in the exhibit? So it kind of, it was a two month project. So it was very cool. Um, so that's art in action. Now at BIMA, we have a quarterly program called Meet Me at the Movies. Um, and this is a program that ran for at least a year, if not two years um, prior to 2020. Um, and it went on hiatus during kind of peak pandemic times. And we are so excited to have brought it back this year. Um, this series is offered in partnership with the Fry Art Museum in Seattle, which is a national pioneer in terms of creative aging programming and partnerships. Um, Mimi That Movies is entertaining, it's inspiring, it's uplifting, and what it, what, what it is, is it's an interactive film program, and it celebrates the wonder of film and its ability to connect people to their memories. Now, it's specifically designed for folks with early stage memory loss and their care partners, but it's actually, it's super fun for all ages and for people who don't deal with memory loss on a day-to-day -day basis um, because the clips are just generally either really heartfelt or hilarious and we can all connect to them um, in different ways. Um, basically, you will have a one-hour program with about a half an hour's worth of short film clips that are introduced by a facilitator. We watch the clips and then discuss each clip. Um, classic and contemporary films and television shows are shown, um, and then there's audience discussion. The next Meet Me at the Movies is August 24th, 11 a.m. to noon, BEMA Auditorium. The theme is travel and adventure. Um, you do not need to register, and it's free of cost, so just come on by um, and attend. We are working currently with IVC and Dementia Friends Northwest also to increase awareness of this program um, because it's, it's really a phenomenal offering. Um, and last quarter, it was like the first week of 70 degree weather and our turnout was really low, um, but 
now that we've had a long stretch of good weather, come to the movies. It's only an hour uh, <laughs> and sit at the bistro afterwards. Um, last meet me at the movies of the year will be in November. And that one is going to focus on artists and museums. Um, so that one should be really interesting as well. Another program that we are finally bringing back, um, at, I, I refuse to say post COVID, but as we've entered into this new stage of living with COVID, um, and now that Kristen Tollefson, our departmental director is back um, from her Fulbright adventures, um, we are going to start doing monthly look again sessions in October. Um, Look Again is designed specifically for people with early stage memory loss and their care partners, and frankly, anyone who's interested in looking at and talking about art. Um, I like to view it as a field trip. It, it runs very similarly to our school-based field trip program. We do facilitated close looking and discussion of one or two pieces of art. Sometimes there's a related and really simple art making activity as well. The whole thing takes place in the museum galleries, um, right as the museum opens when it's a little quieter. It's free of charge. Um, we do ask people to either email the creative aging department or call the front desk at the museum to let us know if you're coming because we like to have chairs out for people to sit. Um, I'd encourage you to check our website in the next two to three weeks for more details, but know that the first Friday in October will be the first session. And just feel free to contact BEMA's front desk to let us know if you're interested. All right, so some of our other partners, which is where we do frankly a lot of our work, um, when one of our key partnerships is with Island Volunteer Caregivers. Um, over the years, BEMA has partnered with several organizations to create museum visits tailored specifically to older adults, and IVC is one of those key organizations. We work really closely with Lynn Murphy, the Life Enrichment Coordinator at IVC to support facilitated visits to museum exhibitions. Um, and then she sets up, IVC brings in cookies and treats and drinks and kind of hosts a post-visit conversation in the classroom space. And that's a really great program um, that's run through our gallery docent program generally. Um, we also work with the Queer Elders Family Group on a bunch of different initiatives. Um, we help support Pride Month activities, um, both in the community and at BEMA. We coordinate with members of the Queer Elders Group for Transgender Day of Remembrance, as well as Queer Bingo, and we kind of help with um, postering and flyering and um, design work and that sort of thing. And then we have a really a new partnership with Dementia Friends uh, Washington, which recently amped up its outreach efforts on Bainbridge. Um, and they're helping us to promote our Meet Me at the Movies program, and we're helping them get the word out about their community information sessions, which are one hour free of charge discussions led by dementia friends. And it's not really a training, but it's more about kind of what is it like to live with dementia and how can you be an effective ally and support person for people in your life and in the community who are trying to navigate early on onset um, dementia. Um, so, if you are interested in learning more about any of these partnerships, or if you have other organizations that you work with um, that you'd like to explore working with BEMA, please contact me um, for more information so we could get that conversation started. Um, because what I'm really excited about is kind of what's next, what's on the horizon? for creative aging, um, both nationally in Washington State and specifically at BEMA. Um, last year, the American Association of Museums issued a report that included liv livable communities for our elders among its five pillars of strong community infrastructure. 
And I've been using the questions and framework for action to really try to think through about how can we work as a museum in community to build on BEMA's existing programs? Um, and how can we kind of elevate um, the creative aging play um, at the museum? So what I'd like to do is just kind of review these questions and then open it up for discussion, question, um, feedback, and um, frankly, stuff for me to take back um, to my boss. Um, so some of the pillars for a healthy community that involves elders are, how can BIMA elevate the power, voice, and status of older individuals and help to create a culture that honors, values, and empowers elders? How can Beamer help to promote age-friendly communities and participate in a network of support? What are current barriers to participation in museum programming? How can Bema ensure that older adults are seen and valued across the museum? How can we build on our current work with community culture bearers, giving them the platform and authority to transmit the knowledge, experiences, skills, and stories they care for? and what programs and services will help to foster intergenerational connections. Now on that last one for me, at least is one of the things that I've been hearing a lot about at our Art in Action in particular is kind of like, what can we do that would bring in specifically like the teens and like where, where could we do that and how could we do that in a way that like honors everybody's schedules and kind of gets people in a space using their hands and like, riffing off of each other as we create um, kind of community-based arts programming. So um, before I turn it over, I mean, I think our education program it ha has done a pretty good job, I think, of being inclusive and low barrier um, across the board, including for elders in our community. And now that BIMA has turned 12, or 1210 this year, um, we're trying to think forward, like, what do we look like in a decade? And where do we meet people, how do we meet people where they're at over that time? And I think we've come a really long way, um, but we are always learning um, and growing and refining and seeking new collaborators. So what I would like to do is kind of turn it over to you. Uh, answer any questions you have, and then kind of leave this slide up. And if people would like to respond to any of these questions that that resonate with you, or that you have particular advice for me on, um, I'd love to hear it. There is so much there for us to take part in. It's wonderful. You're doing a great job. Thank you, Bess, Becky. No problem. I will put this back up. There we go. So do people have any feedback for me? Even got a pen and paper so I can take notes. I'm serious about bringing this back. <laughs> and I'm gonna put my email in the chat also bring that up i'd like to note too if people are more comfortable putting a question in the chat as opposed to speaking uh, that's fine too uh, becky and i both have our chats up and open so we can see And you have a big thing coming up on Saturday, right? We do the block party. That's a really big thing. And yeah, and it's funny because I, I, I focus specifically on creative aging programs, but I mean, that does not preclude people from coming to all of our programming with the exception of maybe school field trips. Um, and yeah, the block party is going to be huge. Uh, we have no idea how many people are coming because it's a non-ticketed event. Um, the last count, it was like, we might have like 200 people. We could have 10,000 people. We really don't know. Um, it's being promoted 
Very widely. Um, I know I have left posters at coffee shops in Seattle. KEXP is a sponsor. Um, it's going to be great. I keep thinking of like the, the Woodstock movie and how like they come on when everybody's just like crashing the gates and they're like, this is now a free concert. And I'm like, yeah. I picture people coming off the ferry. <laughs> This guy, uh oh. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the education department is not handling music. What we're doing is we're hosting between sets, there's going to be a drink and draw um, pop up. So we partner with the Ale House um, to do a once a month drink and draw. Um, except for in the summer when they really like the tables to turn over a little faster, um, where you just show up, we have a live clothes mo figure model um, and we supply all of the art supplies. It's super low key, it's really fun. Um, so we hired a figure model who's great. She's wear gonna wear a dirndl, um, kind of keep the beer garden vibes going. Um, and she'll be at the beer garden um, in the afternoon for a drink and draw. And then my job will be um, we're gonna do letterpress printing. Um, we have a grant from Artswa and the NEA to do letterpress printing that focuses on marginalized voices and shouting your story. We had a letterpress session as an art in action at the senior center some months ago um, where it was strength is and wellness is. And we made posters where we kind of set that type and then people added their own responses to what does strength mean to you? What does wellness mean to you? Um, our postering for block party is art is. And so kind of what does art mean to you? You can set your type, pull two posters, keep one, and then we're gonna build a big poster wall for Instagram and everything. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be fun. And all the bands. So I actually, I have a question for, because I know Catherine has taken a couple of the work bookmaking workshops that I have taught and I have a question um, in terms of our workshop programming, um, which generally speaking, we have kept our workshops adult only. And I'm curious what people think about having our workshops be all ages, not toddlers, not kind of like family drop-in time. But if we're doing a workshop that's kind of all ages, all stages and different entry points for people, would people be interested in having the occasional workshop that is offered to say like um, mature middle schoolers and up? Or is that something that you would not be particularly interested in? Um, I know that <clears throat> we've been talking on a different committee as well about trying to bring on more intergenerational um, activities. Mm -hmm. But again, that, that opens up the big broad question about age groups. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people who, who do their art or whatever like to focus and like the quietness of it. So you mm -hmm. kind of have a mixed bag of what people would prefer. But I think age group has a lot to, is a big factor. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, so middle school and up might not be a bad idea because they're I always, older. Yeah, I, and I always like to think of like middle school because the library system generally, re, when they say teen programming, they mean like sixth grade and up. And generally when it's when it's an on-site workshop at BEMA, there is some sort of cost involved, at which point I get the sense that families aren't going to foot the bill for a kid who's not particularly interested in that activity versus a come one, come all sort of thing. But assuming that there's a cost involved, it's going to be a kid who is interested in making a book or who currently is really like diving into 
to making. Um, yeah, I saw I you. Oh, I go think ahead. it would. Go ahead. Um, I, I just thought, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I think it would be interesting to to pilot it, to experiment with it. Um, and as you were talking, Becky, I was thinking about, I, I just piloted a new program. I've been teaching, as you know, Becky, mindful uh, space stress reduction and mindful self-compassion. So this summer I piloted, and I just finished it uh, this uh, last Friday, a four-week mindful, mindful outdoors walks series that was two and a half hours per week. And it was just people here at the senior center. Um, but I was, uh, you know, as you were talking about intergenerational programs, uh, it sparked my curiosity as to what it would be like if um, uh, I offered a mindfulness outdoor walks that also included uh, middle school or older school children. For instance, the, 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 the children, the, the teenagers, I guess, that go to the Hila school and how that experience might be different um, if mm -hmm. younger people would accompany um, um, the older people that tend to use the senior center. However, I think, I mean, many of the people that did come to this program really enjoyed um, being together as a group and uh, um, there was some affinity there um, amongst them. So I, it would be a, a whole different dynamic if younger people joined us. Also, um, I did want to mention, as I was asking for feedback, uh, um, comments after each walk. Uh, there's one person in, in my group that said, well, I've been using what I've been learning in my mindful walks with you at BEMA. I went with an artist friend to the new exhibit and she's a really good artist, but I was going with her from room to room and looking at the, at the artwork that had landscapes. And I was picking out aspects in, in those um, artworks that she had never even noticed uh, because you had taught us to tune in, um, you know, mindful seeing, mindful hearing, mindful listening and so forth. And so I was really to, uh, tuned in to the soil, the textures of the soil, um, the leaves, the light and so on and so forth. So uh, initially when I was thinking about this mindful walks program, I had thought about um, incorporating an arts component. Perhaps mm -hmm. after people did the walks, they would come back um, to the senior center and do some artwork. Um, or maybe while they were doing the walks, they would collect items and do some artwork on the spot. And I spoke with Reed about this, but we decided to just go, you know, go ahead um, with the unadorned, you know, with just the mindful walks for the for the pilot. But anyway, you know, um, this particular person mm -hmm. was quite excited about how she was um, bringing her um, experience in the walks to the museum and she taught this fellow artist how to look so, um, that's so uh, exciting and, I, and then as you were talking i was thinking if if there were kids younger people around with different eyes you know beginner's eyes um uh you know the combination of the adults and the younger people um in the walks would it could enhance the walks depending on the older people that, that signed up and their receptivity Mm -hmm. um, to younger people, mm -hmm. but also the kinds of art projects uh, might be interesting because you were talking about that earlier where you had, um, it, there were some younger people that came to the session and did some artwork. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Did yep. I understand yep. you? Yep. Um, so anyway, um, you and I had briefly talked about uh, doing something in regard to mindfulness. So um, that's, I mean, I've just, I've been talking on sort of stream of consciousness here, so I'll just zip it and, you know, you can respond however you like. And also, no, I'm Lena, super um, excited uh -huh. about that. We, I had piloted kind of three, but I, in my head, I have like a year's worth of these kind of contemplative looking cards yes. for youth in the galleries. And they sort of got stuck um, just at, IVC, like we're trying to decide like who's going to print them, but basically IVC piloted the first set of three cards during one of their conversation and coffee visits, and they went over really well. Um, I just shared them with Kristen to see if we could maybe just print them in-house um, on smaller paper so that we can start using them because um, I did a mindfulness exercise at our board advisory committee social last month, 
and it was so fun and people like even on somebody on staff who will remain nameless when I asked for feedback he was like oh, I loved that and I'm going to start using it because I'm so ADD that when I visit museums, not just BEMA, but any museum, I tend to just kind of be, have like this little rabbit brain and like walk around and not pay attention. And what we did was we made viewfinders um, out of old um, slides, like camera slides, and use them to focus in on a particular oh. part of a painting. Mm -hmm. And kind of what are you seeing? And then kind of zoomed out to bird's eye view and then would zoom back in and what are oh, you great. seeing? Mm -hmm. And it was so fun. And so, and I mean, the governor was, I had the governor like doing that, you know, but it actually was a meaningful experience. And I think that it really changes the way you both look at art and look at the world. And um, that was an activity that was originally developed by um, Karita Kent, who was an artist and educator um, kind of during the pop art movement of the, yes. the 60s. And I asked, I was like, please, everybody take the viewfinders with you. And you don't have to like leave here today and drive home with one, you know, but use them. Use them when you're looking at a tree, use them outside and see what you notice differently. And um, yeah, that would be so much fun to work on. It builds on what we do in our field trip program. We use visual thinking strategies, which basically we take mindful breaths, we settle into our bodies. We say like, we can even use the slide that's up here right now, looking at that photograph, I would ask people kind of to settle in. We take 30 seconds to look at that photograph. And then I say, what's going on in that picture? And somebody will probably say, oh, everybody has gloves on. So you're noticing that people have gloves on. What else is going on in that picture? And we just do that. And it's amazing. It can take 20 minutes for that conversation to peter out. And what we're noticing lately is that if the conversation starts flagging and the noticing starts flagging, what you said, Catherine, about different beginner's eyes. Yes. You have the group stand up and I split the group in half and I have them switch places and settle back into their bodies for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then what's going on in this picture? And just taking two steps to the left or two steps to the right completely changes what they notice. And it's it's incredible. It's really fun um, to see. Because I think it surprises people. Like I thought I was seeing everything. Um, so I would love to kind of explore that. And if, if Reed decides to offer kind of mindful walking, well, we did do the mindful. I mean, we did the as mindful. As a second, like walks. kind of beyond the pilot, like, you know, BEMA could definitely think about ways to bring in um, mindful looking from an arts perspective into that. Um, well, well, you know, we could, you know, this is a mindful walks outdoors, but as you were talking and you said you mm -hmm. do, do field trips, mm -hmm. uh, it, it sparked my interest in perhaps we, you and I together could mm -hmm. come up with a, a pilot of mindful looking walks that's really art focused, you know, Absolutely. that we would go out and focus, just do mindful looking. Mm -hmm. And then uh, perhaps then go back uh, to the, um, go back to BEMA mm -hmm. and then do some mindful look. I don't know, I'm just talking yeah. out loud, but you and mm -hmm. I might be, I mean, that would be a spinoff, um, yeah. you know, um, uh, of the mindful outdoors walks. I mean, perhaps we could put art, incorporate some art mm -hmm. into the mindful outdoors walks, but I was also thinking there could be one that's really focused on mindful looking mm -hmm. um, and also to help people to better um, uh, to have enhanced mm -hmm. um, appreciation as they go through the art museum you know to mm -hmm. look in different ways with beginner's eyes I mean that could be fun to experiment and it could be um, if you wanted in terms of your interest in intergenerational mm -hmm. we could do that with a you know with a inter intergenerational um, angle as well 
Yeah, let's. I'm just let's open keep to talking. It. Yeah, let's keep talking about. It. So there's also Katie Auger who used to work at the senior center and is now over at IVC. Um, I know she is um, working on their wellness program. Um, mm -hmm. It's a pilot. I think it's a one-year pilot project, and we are in very early, very early discussion stages with her about this brainstorm we had. We don't know if it's going to happen on our timeline or not, because I don't think it's going to, but we had thought of doing basically a day camp for seniors oh. um, uh -huh. over winter months when people are feeling kind of isolated, I mean, kind of the gray months and kind of like half day, day camp sessions where, um, and we were interested in talking to them about like, could they help us co-sponsor it through the wellness program so that we're not having to charge for the camp. Um, but it would be really interesting to like explore, is there an element of close looking, close making that could be part of that? Because we were thinking mm -hmm. it would be like a four to five day, like a week long like we're doing summer camp right now for kids. They're all having a really good time and the energy is great. And like people like that, like they like to come together. So um, let's keep talking about this yeah. and kind of how we could make that happen. Lena, what do you think about all this in terms of, I like this idea of a day camp or a, this camp idea. What do you think in terms of a tie-in with the senior center and IVC? Or what, because for one, we already have existing programs. BEMA is already, you know, an existing yeah. program. Your mindfulness is already an existing program. It's a matter of how do we collaborate the two and, and what does that look like? So the it's great listening to the dialogue start, right? This is where it begins. Um, as far as, you know, what it looks like ultimately, you know, it'll just take more discussions, yeah. obviously, to find out if we can frame something to present and see what we can come up with. Yeah. And I mean, it's a it's a discussion and we are in the, and the part of why I raised these questions are we are in that kind of program planning process right now for what does next year look like um, as this year starts sort of winding down. So these are these are things that probably are on the like many months away, like horizon, but it's it's a way to look forward and figure out like, what are we doing well? What aren't we doing well? What actually fits into like the museum's broader stuff? Like we've had programming in the past um, that it's been important programming, but it's been hard to figure out like, how does this actually fit into like the mission as an arts organization? And so like, and given the way, um, nonprofit world is right now, um, it's important to say like, okay, here's how we tie it in. And that's, you know, and how do we, for the programs that don't necessarily fit, um, how do we serve as a container to help like either have physical space for those programs for somebody else to like run with it? Or how can we support the program by getting the word out or providing like one-off expertise or something like that? But yeah, we should keep talking about that. Hi, Becky. Um, Becky this hi, Anita. Hi, oh, sorry, this is ahead, Anita. I, can you hear me or? Yep. Yeah, because I, I can't get on the, the group thing, so I, I don't see myself. Anyway, um, I, well, I have enjoyed all the programs and becoming familiar with what is happening at BEMA and at the Senior Center. And a couple of things I just wanted to mention, like I've enjoyed the creative aging uh, programs at the Senior Center. I usually come with the perspective of, oh, I can, when I babysit with my grandson now, I will do some of these projects with him. He's only four years old, so I can pick and choose, you know, but, but it's, um, you know, in the meantime, before we're really bringing uh, children into the program, just remember that a lot of us are taking these ideas and sharing them with younger people. So I think that that's pretty fun. And also I wanted to mention that there had been, um, uh, a morning, let's see, I, yes, it was a morning 
um, at the senior center where a teacher brought her class. I think it was just before school was out. And the students came it, uh, to help at, at the senior center. So it was called a volunteer day for them or something. I don't know how, the, it, I don't remember how it was labeled. But so the, the students came and they were divided into three groups. And so one, of, one third of them was distributing mulch and taking care of the plants outside of the senior center. Another part was doing um, um, an art project. They were, do, they were doing chalk drawings out on, on the patio in the back, which was really fun. And they had such interesting ideas. And then the other group um, were working on collage inside the building. And that was really popular as well. So um, something like this, and these were older, these I think were middle schoolers. So they were older um, and it, it was just very interesting interacting with them and trying to help sort of guide them, but stay in the background. But something like that could also yeah. be, um, you know, with your ideas of mindful walking and observing, uh, coming back to the senior center uh, and doing some then activity like that may may work. Anyway, I just wanted to say that and just thank you for all the the programs. I have I have tried so many. I've enjoyed. It's the done so film. great. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've enjoyed the filming the film and and I've gone to these programs thinking well, I'm coming to them because I in case I am working with someone with dementia mm -hmm. but I find I just love them for myself and They're I love really the fun. conversation yeah. so I really would encourage everyone that, you know to come to them if they have an opportunity thank you you're welcome now Becky if people are looking at the um <clears throat> the slide that's on the screen mm -hmm. right now and are kind of taking down notes as to which mm -hmm. questions they might you know be thinking about um, I'm assuming they just email it to the email address you put in the chat. Absolutely. And now I know you usually have the talks on YouTube. And also you did take attendance today. So I can provide a copy of this presentation if you want to email it to the folks that attended. And my email is also on the very first slide of the slide deck. Um, and yes, and you can also just email me directly at Becky at BIArtMuseum.org. We also have a creative aging email. It's creative aging at BIArtMuseum.org. They both go to me. Um, and if you, for whatever reason, forget my email, there is in fact a staff list with our emails and phone numbers on the BIMA website as well. If you want to be added to our creative aging email list, um, get in touch with me and I will add you to that list so that you will get the update when Look Again registration goes live and as we have new programming um, coming up. 